Hello guys. Today we're going to learn how to summarize a text. You can also say how to sum up a text. I know this can sound pretty obvious for some of you, but experience has showed me that some students have trouble with making a good summary. So let's uh, take a look at nine rules that will help you write a good summary. Mind the fact that I say the word summary, a summary, not a sum up or something. To sum up or to summarize is the verb. A summary is the noun. Rule number one. You should start your summary with an introductory sentence that states the text origins briefly, the title of the book, the name of the author, the date of publication, the chapter it is taken from. For example, this text is an extract from Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, published in 1818. One piece of advice, keep it short. You're writing a summary, so this introductory sentence should be short and to the point, as in the example here. Second, it should be grammatically correct. This is a place where you shouldn't make any mistake. So please, mind the preposition, an extract from. If you, do, if you have a hard time remembering that, you can think about the question, where does my text come from? Okay, you would not say come off. Okay, so don't use the preposition of, an extract from. You should always use the same sentence. In, in this way, you, wouldn't, you won't you know, spend too much time asking yourself, what, how can I start my summary? Rule number two. Your summary must contain the main events or the main ideas of the text, so no dialogues. Even if you're summarizing a play, for example, which consists of dialogues, or if um, you're summarizing a, a narrative uh, in which there is a lot of dialogues, don't write a dialogue. You're supposed to tell this uh, from the third-person perspective. So if you have a first-person narrative, use the third person. Don't take the same narrative voice as the text. The summary should be written in your own words, so no quotes. This is not the place for, for quotation. So you need to rephrase, use synonyms, equivalent expressions, show how well you speak English and how well you have understood the text. If your summary is a succession of quotes, it would not make sense. Rule number four sounds a bit obvious, but again, experience has showed me that uh, it's not always the case. Your summary should always be shorter than the original text. So, if there is a word limit, please respect it. If there is no specific word limit, please make sure that your summary is shorter. If it's not, there is a problem somewhere. Rule number five. The summary should contain all the major points of the original text. So, you should left, leave out the fine details, the examples, the illustrations, explanations, everything that is not crucial to the plot. Rule number six. So, basically, your summary should answer the following questions. Who, what, where, when, why, how. Sometimes you can't, you can't answer all these questions, but don't be too vague, okay? Be precise enough. Your summary, and this is a very important rule, should only contain the ideas of the original text. Do not insert any of your opinions, interpretations, deductions, or comments into a summary. This is not the place. You will leave that for the analysis, okay? Be neutral and objective. What does the text say? You will make your deductions and interpretations later. Rule number eight, grammar. What tense should you use to sum up? My advice is to use the present simple. It works better. The preterite sometimes works, but as you will see, it can be a bit weird. But please, I beg you, never use the future, okay? There is no point in telling a story in the future tense. This is something we do in French. It's already horrible in French, so and it's, you know, nonsensical in English. So try to be coherent. For example, you can say, This document is the first scene of Macbeth, written by Shakespeare between 1599 and 1606. In this passage, three witches gather and discuss the next meeting, during which they will prophesy Macbeth's fate. You see, the verbs in bold characters are in the present. I use the future only because I'm referring to a scene that will take place later on. So that makes sense. You can say, in this extract from Macbeth, from Macbeth sorry, three witches gathered and discussed their meeting using the preterite. Sounds a bit weird, though. But you can't say, in this extract, three witches will gather and discuss the next meeting. This is just not possible, so forget it, please. Rule number nine, keep a formal register. Even if the text is colloquial, full of curse words or familiar expressions, 
or on the contrary, written in uh, an elevated style, like for example, 19th century text, use a formal neutral academic register, something that is neither too familiar nor too elevated. Okay, so you're not here to mimic the style of the writer, you're just here to explain what happens. So, this was the final rule. I hope this helped uh, for this activity and that you will keep that in mind for the final exam. Bye-bye!